our guest. She is the iconic Meredith Grey on the longest running medical drama in history, Grey's Anatomy. But fun fact, did we all know that she can eat an entire watermelon by herself? I'd like to see that. Um, please welcome, I can't believe she's here, Ellen Pompeo. <laughs> Watermelon by yourself? I've never tried, <laughs> but I, let's throw down together. Let's do it. Um, okay, you're, you've announced that you're leaving Grey's. It's been a century. It's the longest running show. How do you feel? Is, was, it, was it, are you ready? Is it time? Do you have a next game plan? Are you ready to not know? What is, what is it? I feel super happy. Really? Yeah. Um, but listen, the show has been incredible to me, and and I love I've loved a lot of the experience. Listen, it's just I, I gotta you know I gotta mix it up a little bit. I'm 53. My brain is like scrambled eggs. God, you're hot. I have to. Thank you. I gotta do some new. Th I gotta do something new, or I'm gonna literally turn into like you know you can't do the New York Times crossword puzzle every single day. I mean, 19 years is like more. That's longer than people keep their kids in their house. Like people. <laughs> keep their kids in their house until they're 18 and then they send them off to college. So this is like me, like going away to college, kind of. So what do you want to do next? I, I have a lot that I'm doing. Um, I have three kids and um, so I take care of them and it's really important for me to be around for them and be more present for them. I'm gonna do a limited series for Hulu um, in the spring, which is a very cool, like kind of crazy true story. Um, I started I'm this excited company, about that. Better. Better um, Remedies. Which we're gonna talk about. Now, um, switching gears a little bit, your level of sticking up for women, you really send me into a, how can I be a stronger, more convicted woman? Because you have changed the industry for women with demanding <laughs> equal pay, how were you, how did you find the bravery and the strength for yourself or anyone else to do that? Because you changed the industry. Putting up with a lot, lot of crap <laughs> and just being tired of it. It's not like I was born this way. It's not, well, I mean, I am from Boston, so I do, I think I have yes. a little bit of Yes, yes. Um, but I think that Hollywood and a lot of workplaces are not necessarily the culture is not necessarily to empower women or build us up or make us feel confident, secure, or strong. So we don't. And then by the grace of God, you get maybe tired of putting up with certain things. Do you get to a place where you have nothing to lose? I'm sure that's definitely part of it. Great point. You risked it all. And my gut instinct tells me that because what you did was so helpful for other people, that it was bigger, you made this risk so personal, but you made it bigger than you, and that's why everybody rallied around you, you stayed on that show, you got paid more, you changed the game for other women, you became more successful, more respected, and in a way you made your publicist job easier because <laughs> you won the battle. <laughs> and I Thank you for showing all women that they can and should take that risk and maybe it's doing it for the right reasons and in the right way, but man, you handled an epic sweeping change that I am so in awe of. Thank you. So, so many people not in my inner circle reached out to me and said, this is amazing. I mean, icons, but the people directly around me was quiet as a mouse on set that day. Quiet, you could have heard a pin drop. So when your life does change, when you are courageous and fearless and speak out, don't expect everybody to stand up and cheer for you because they don't. That is a good lesson. And I thought that was really interesting and a life lesson and I've never forgot it. I have always been so enamored with strong people. Okay. 
Pivoting, is it true that you met your husband in a grocery store? Yes. How yes. did you meet? What happened? What was the encounter? So I was with my mutual friend and they knew each other. But it wasn't like love at first sight or anything. See, this is the thing now. Okay, we've Don't, been talking like, about dating, so go for it. It's not some big romance that happened over like crackers and cheese in the aisle and we were like, oh my God, you're the one. No, 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 no. Wasn't like that at all. So what was just it like? like just like, hey, how you doing? Nice to see you. Yeah, I gotta go. And I walked out and my friend stayed and talked to him. Then we sort of, he called me a bunch of times and I wouldn't call him back. And, and then he said, you know, you're rude. I ha you won't call me back. And I said, well, because I'm not trying to go on a date with you. And he said, who's trying to go on a date with you? I don't even know you. <laughs> <laughs> and so we had a fight first. And then, you know, that's kind of always the way to my heart is like, piss me off and I'm all yours. 